Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine. We are here in the New York studios of the Conference Board, and it's my pleasure to wel welcome back a very familiar guest, and that's Catherine Bromelow, who's a partner with PwC's Governance Insight Center. Catherine, welcome back. Thank you, TK. I won't tell the audience how we, long we've had <laughs> opportunity to do this, because I don't want to distort neither of our reputation. But we're going to talk about an interesting topic today. We're going to talk about how boards can help companies navigate distress. Now that doesn't sound terribly positive, okay? But it does a good segue into my first question, and that is basically why this is an important topic that at least board members have to give an ear to. Sure, and, and I absolutely agree. It is a bit of a downer subject, and it's especially you know, people may be scratching their heads because as we sit here and tape this, I mean, the economy is still roaring ahead, the stock market's still doing well, but one of the things we know is even when there is a really strong economy, there are always industries, either because they're just counter-cyclical to the economy or because they're experiencing their own kinds of stresses and challenges that are going to have a hard time and struggle. And just as an example, I think sort of 2014 to 2015, 2016, when the economy was doing pretty well overall, we saw quite a spike in bankruptcies of oil and gas companies because they were dealing with an issue that had built up in the industry before that. So, you know, the, the first, the first, I guess, um, issue is that your industry may not be doing as well as the rest of the economy, which is why directors need to pay attention. There can also be a lot of change to industries or to individual companies from technology advancements. And so that's another real game changer that can put a company into or, or more approaching distress. And the other element is that there can be situations where your company's products, say, are under investigation by regulators or some kind of governmental agency um, that's calling into question their safety or their quality or some other aspect that suddenly make customers and consumers sort of put their hands back in their pockets and step away and say, no, I'm either going to go with another supplier or maybe defer my spending decision until this issue, whatever it is, is taken care of. So on an industry-wide basis, from a technology innovation or individual companies, there are all kinds of things that can cause distress. The one other thing is that even though the, or the, um, sorry, the economy is rolling along really well right now, unfortunately that will not happen forever and at some point we're bound to see some kind of downturn. That'll impact a lot of other industries that might be feeling pretty good right now and a, and a lot of companies are going to have to struggle with that. Yeah. So I, I think just sort of the bottom line is we think directors have to be ready to help their management teams and their companies look for these sort of signs of distress and signs that some, some kind of negative change is coming so they can better help them address those yeah. issues. Well, we don't have to look back too far you know, in history to see signs of where industries have been just on fire and people missed yeah. warning signals, okay? We can look at the low-grade mortgage. I mean, people were making money hand over fist and nobody was looking at the tea leaves which is my segue into the next question, and that is, Catherine, um, what are you know, the red flags or the early warning signs that a board should be looking at? Because sometimes, again, uh, and we'll talk about this in a second, the euphoria of doing well sort of seems to put the blinders on. But uh, let's first talk about what the early warning signs are. Sure. And 
you know, maybe even just before talking about those signs, one of the things that we urge companies to do is to try and identify and actually address the early warning signs as early as possible. Because the earlier a company does that, we just think it preserves more options for how they can react. And, and the analogy we often use is our health. You know, if you have a, a, a little niggling health issue, part of the question is, do you go to see your doctor early on and get it addressed when your doctor has more options? Or do you deny that it's happening and avoid your doctor until it becomes much more chronic and the doctor has far more limited options. Right. So that's sort of the analogy we use when looking at early warning signs. I guess they come in maybe really two main buckets when I think about early warning signs. And the one bucket, it's going to be really easy to identify if any or many of these are happening. And they tend to be interconnected. And they are things like a sharp decline in your stock price, um, declining earnings or recurring losses, a downgrade in your credit, um, even things like uh, recurring financial restatements or some kind of investigation at the company or significant restatement that is going to take so much management time and effort that for a period of time the company is not going to be able to access capital markets. So that's sort of the one bucket of early warnings. Generally, if any of those are happening, the director, the management team, and everyone around the world is going to know about them. They're very, very evident. I think you look for when many are happening at the same time, as they often do with those ones. The second set of early warning indicators are a little more almost easy to dismiss. And it could be things like a new entrant into your market um, who's bringing some kind of technological disruption. Or it could be analysts and activists who are continually criticizing your company's strategy, your business model, or economic performance or it could be just technological innovation and disruption. Um, those kinds of elements, or you know, the other thing that we're seeing some of lately, it could be one or more senior executives departing. And we've seen companies where there have been sort of rashes of that, sometimes tagged to the hashtag MeToo movement, sometimes for other reasons. But all of those elements can start to, especially if you have more than one happening, indicate that the company can be approaching some kind of distress. Um, just before we, we maybe go on, I just want to say the other thing we recommend is directors really re-look at, maybe with a critical eye, the kind of performance information they're getting from their management team. And are they getting information that even, even that shows trends on things like cash position and liquidity and, and elements like that? Um, and if not, you know, it's a great opportunity now while things are still relatively good to upgrade. So maybe you're going to be able to read those tea leaves a little better. Um, and the other thing is I think directors, it's really helpful to maintain your skepticism because inside the boardroom walls, the management team may be very optimistic in painting a rosy picture, but if when directors are reading newspapers and watching TV and reading analyst reports, if they're seeing signs of some sort of doom and gloom for the industry as a whole or the company, I think it's really good for directors to start pushing back on the management team and saying, you know, help us reconcile why do we think we are going to, as, as a company, escape all of the doom and gloom that everyone else is yeah. talking about. I'll add uh, uh, staff tur or personnel turnover reports to that as well. Mm -hmm. If you have aberrations in that, it's worth asking the question why yeah. um, on that. So um, that takes us to the issue of why, um, particularly in good times, which you'd have to categorize yeah. now as one of those, when people are doing pretty well, why both boards and management teams are not great at sort of recognizing these red flags, okay? And I, I know I have, <laughs> I'll offer an opinion, but first of all, I'd like to hear you, um, what you have to say about that. Sure, um, I've got to guess a, an opinion or a, or a belief around this. And I think a lot of it comes down to sort of human nature and biases. And I'll just give you an example. I, um, I used the example earlier that one early warning sign could be a new entrant 
to your industry that's going to disrupt things from a technology perspective. You know, if I think of an executive, a seasoned executive sitting in a company, they've been batting aside new entrants who are going to change and revolutionize the world probably for decades, right? And so I think it's really tough to figure or to get past a, a belief that that, that is not going to be any more successful, like new, new company A is not going to be any more successful than the other 20 companies that, that have talked big in the past. So I do think that's a really tough thing to get beyond, is that understand that the next company that is talking big may actually be the company that does it big. Um, then the other element is I do think you know, we, we tend to like optimism in our leaders. And so someone going into the boardroom with a really pessimistic perspective, maybe they don't necessarily get far. And especially if a company's already been struggling or trying to reorient or, or right the ship in, in whatever way. Um, management knows how hard they're working and I think they have a belief that the steps they've taken are actually going to make a difference. And so the question might be, well, maybe the second quarter we didn't turn around, but I know in the third quarter we're going to be able to do that. And so I, I wish I had a better answer, but it's just a really tough thing. And I think it deals with what we can recognize and acknowledge, and it's all human nature related. Well, um, to that point, that was the, the issue that I was going to raise because I was that person, uh, that company head that made presentations mm -hmm. to the board. And um, I mean, all the everything was based on positive news. Okay, you yeah. didn't go in there, especially when you were on a roll and you hit new highs with revenue, or you did something. I mean, you milk that sucker, and it was human nature not to bring somebody down. Okay, yeah. in those situations, and that's why it's just critically important for the board to not get caught up in that and, and look for, you know, the, the soft underbelly of, you know, a company's operations because it is not, we all know that it's not going to last forever um, um, on that. So I know you guys have done, at PwC, have done some extensive work in this, Catherine. Where can somebody who wants to put their hands on it? Cause you also recommend some structure issues, some planning issues that I found very interesting in your publication. Where can people get a copy of that? Oh, sure, TK. Our publication is actually called How Can Your Board Help Your Company Navigate Distress Before It's Too Late? And it's part of our The Board's Guide to Deals series, and it's available on our website uh, for our Governance Insight Center. Well, Catherine, thank you for joining me as usual. I appreciate you taking the time. and. Even though it wasn't the most positive topic, <laughs> I can understand we should be giving this warning, yeah. you know, particularly during these times. So thank you for joining us. Thanks, Tiki. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week with another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, Diligent. PWC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member, along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.